done, but it's done enough. Let's give you a quick tour of phase one of Smokey 2. If you didn't see my last video, this is a 2021 Ford Transit, now with just over a thousand miles on it. Yeah, low mileage. What can you see from the outside? It is a high roof extended, the biggest version of the Transit they make. I've obviously got a bit of a build inside. We'll take a look at that, but we'll start with the outside. On the roof, we have three 200 watt rich solar panels on Rhino racks. That gives me 600 watts of solar charging. That's a good start. And a nice improvement over the 350 on the old van. I've added a Max Air roof vent. Asked me how hard it was cutting a big hole in the roof of my brand new van. Once again, we've got a shore power hookup, standard NOCO plug, installed in the plastic of the bumper. No holes required going through the sheet metal this time. Thanks to Yellow Wolf for the inspiration on that. And because I do have a trailer to tow, it's got an e-trailer hitch with the wiring and I just transplanted my old tow bar from the old van. So a little explanation. What I've tried to do in phase one of this build is kind of like a no build build. Everything you see here, the tables, the sink, the cabinets and everything, those are strapped to the wall. They are not bolted down for the most part. The uh, upper shelf there is, but we'll get to that. Everything else can be moved around. I don't know how I want the ultimate setup of this thing to look yet. So I've set it up with my best guess for now, but if I want to try different things as I go along, I can move things around until I find what I like best. Alrighty, you can see the same Alpacool refrigerator freezer I used in the first van. This has worked great for the past two years and it's going to continue to work great here. Also similar is the fresh and gray water jugs, but the sink's a bit different. This is actually a fish cleaning table. <laughs> That's all it is, a, a, uh, a two foot by four foot fish cleaning table. A little upgrade from the last van, uh, just a little USB faucet. So I don't have to use the hand pump or anything, but that just pulls water straight up from the freshwater tank, goes down the drain, and straight into my gray water jug. Nothing fancy there. This is all exposed, unlike the last van at some point I'll probably enclose this. I have enclosed my electrical system, which is behind this pegboard. Eventually, this will be the front face of a nice little cabinet I'll build. But for now, this is good enough. And you can get a little look in there. All the stuff. What a mess. So I'll just tell you, I have a Renogy charge controller, 60 amp. It has the capacity to handle more than the 800 watts of solar I can hypothetically fit on the roof. Uh, let me show you. So as you can see, I've got room up here for a fourth solar panel if I want to. I started with just the three because 600 watts is a lot. Plus, I may want to add a second roof vent in the front, kind of like I did on that van. So I stuck with just the 600 watts for starters. I have room to expand forward for either the extra solar panel or the extra roof vent, and we'll figure it out from there. What I have instead are these nifty window inserts that just go right into both of the side windows. That gives me ventilation in from the front going all the way to the back of the van. I suppose while we're talking about temperatures and stuff, I should talk about the insulation. So along the walls, basically where the uh, windows would go in a passenger van, I've got one inch of poly ISO. The entire roof has two inches of poly ISO. That is supplemented with Havelock wool. You can see a little bit here where you know the, the curve is a little funny. 
Havelock wool in these upper areas as well as the lower areas below the windows and such. There's all kinds of nooks and crannies in those areas that are just really hard to get polyiso into. So I just grabbed one box of Havelock wool, 100 square feet, and I just stuffed the wool into those nooks and crannies. For now, it's all covered up with, well, chloroplast, which is basically uh, corrugated plastic. It's like corrugated cardboard, but uh, it's plastic. Cheap, lightweight, easy to work with, and it's done and good enough for now. It's actually the same stuff I used on this van to give the solar panels a little bit of breathing room. Before I move too far back, I have a swivel seat base on the passenger seat only. Those things are not cheap, so I only got one because it's just me. And besides, the driver's seat, there's really nowhere for the driver's legs to go anyway. There really isn't room for a second person the way I've got this set up. So that's fine. I kind of stole that design from my first van because it worked. Up here, this is a curtain rod that I already had kicking around from my very first starter van, not even Smokey the first, with just a blackout curtain that I got bundled up here, but it goes all the way across to seal off the cab at night. Yeah, there's a little room above, but unless I absolutely need perfect stealth, it's fine. Also a curtain here on a bungee cord that goes all the way across the, uh, the side window as well. So you can see I've got storage for kitchen type stuff in here. And then another one down below. Uh, yeah, that ham radio is sitting there because I don't have anywhere else to put it just now. Might recognize this stuff, angle iron. And this is a one foot wide shelf that extends 12 feet all the way from the front to the back of the van. Tons of storage up here. The transit has lots and lots of pre-threaded holes like this one. I can put a bolt straight into that right now with no modification at all. So I used a lot of those to bolt things in, like the shelf behind me. It needed a little help and a little extra support, but uh, these are just aluminum straps bolted again to mounting points on the wall and through the, uh, through the angle iron, and it works. And like I said, this is all temporary. Oh, well, I should turn on some light back here, which I can do. I've got these puck lights in the ceiling, as well as these strip LEDs below the shelf and all around. I use these mainly as accent lights, where if I need some serious lighting, that's where the puck lights come in. And they work pretty darn well. Anyway, down the side, I've got just basic plastic drawers. I've got a table. I thought this was gonna work as sort of a desk area, but the bed, I'll get to the design on that. Uh, it's a bit too high to really use that as a desk. So right now it's just kind of storage. Uh, I've got a 24 inch TV hanging from a, uh, a ceiling mount. I just have that put through my, uh, my shelf. I wouldn't have chosen that particle board stuff, but it was free for my uncle's trailer, so I used what I had. Lister's food and water fits really nicely by the wheel well. This is kind of a space I didn't have a good use for because that wheel well makes things awkward for storage, but it works well for the cat. And of course, I got the Nature's Head composting toilet. I moved that from the old van. It's on a uh, board of its own that just sort of sits there and it's not going anywhere. I showed off this cool bed idea in my last video, but I, I gotta show it again. Check this out. This whole thing rotates up. It's a good size. It runs lengthwise down the van so I can actually stretch out, unlike going across my old van. And using this existing setup, it saved me the trouble of engineering a new one for myself. And again, it just bolts into a two by four that's bolted into those threaded holes on the side of the van. So that was easy. Like I say, storage under the bed and Lister's litter box, a new one that's all enclosed, fits perfectly under the bed. 
So just like the old van, I can just pull it straight out the back to change it. These lights to the right don't match the rest of the lights. That's because those are what came with the van. They turn on automatically when I unlock the doors. So I figured why throw them away? So I cut holes through the insulation to mount them well to the insulation for now. One day I'll put a real ceiling in, but for now they'll just hang out there. Don't worry, all I gotta do is push a button here and they'll turn off along with these lights. One significant upgrade is the 2000 watt inverter and the addition of a small microwave oven. I skipped a microwave in my last van and the big inverter because I didn't want to add that level of complexity, but I went for it in this one and it wasn't really that much work. Plus I got space to spare for a microwave. It's also where my Starlink router hangs out. That will run off of the same inverter instead of fighting the problems I've had with the 300 watt one before. The dish fits perfectly back here for storage and we'll go up on the roof just like in my old van when I deploy it. I've also got my Verizon and T-Mobile hotspots to get me online. Same setup I had before. As well as the same router, it has its own little on off button here, but uh, that's the same router I saved from the last van. I can hook it up to Wi-Fi or either of my two hotspots. Behind me, you might have seen it before, I got this sunshade. I splurged for one made specifically for the transit. Fits perfectly in the windshield. And I've also got them for the side windows. I don't have those up right now. Silver on one side, black on the other, so I can put them black side out if I want more stealth than I'm gonna get with the curtains. Got a couple of outlets here. This is where I can plug in my laptop instead of running it and dangling it across like I did in the old van. Ham radio, running off the house battery. Same antenna as well, but I did get a base specifically made for the Transit to mount it in well, the same location as the other van. So there we are, version 1.0 of my new home on wheels, Smoky 2. Wow. This is not the final version in here. I know these walls are a bit bare. There's a lot of bare metal that's going to transmit a bit of cold through and these cabinets well yeah plastic furniture does not last forever i know this this is just to get me started and on the road it has been way too hot in florida to build a van in the first place even though it's only april i've been fighting 90 degree temperatures and 90 thousand percent humidity it feels like but i've gotten this much done I can hit the road, I can start moving north. I already have ideas for a cabinet that I want to enclose the electrical stuff while still allowing access, but I don't need to do that now. The plan from here is to start slowly making my way north, back to New England. I've got a storage unit up there that I need to get rid of. Of course, I'm not gonna take the direct route, just hopping on I-95 and driving is not only boring, it's also a lot of traffic and I don't like either of those. So I'm gonna make some interesting stops on the way. And well, assuming I'm not a bad YouTuber, like I was through this entire van bill that I could have gotten a million videos out of, I'll take you along for the ride and show you. <laughs>